Hello, you guys. I want to share a story and also my experience. Um, my spiritual as well as my physical experience. And that is uh, seeing in 3D. But first, I want to give the, def the definition of what 3D vision is. And it's called uh, stereopsis. Uh, hopefully, I'm saying that correctly. If not, forgive me. Or it is called stereoscopic vision, which is the visual ability to see your surroundings in three dimensions, allowing a person to judge the difference between themselves and objects around them. Also, poor stereopsis could indicate a serious eye condition known as amp ampliopia. Okay, I make the word is A M B L Y O P I A, which is also the name uh what people call lazy eye. Okay, so the next definition is I'm going to give the same thing, but just speaking of 3D vision itself and the depth of it. So as 3D vision depth perception is dependent on the ability to use both eyes together at the highest level. 3D vision relies on both eyes working together to accurately focus on the same point in space. And remember that, I want to go back to this, 3D vision relies on both eyes working together to accurately focus on the same point in space. The brain is then able to interpret the image that each eye sees to create your perception of death. And the deficiencies in this depth perception can result in a lack of 3D vision or headaches and eye strain doing like 3D movies. And every person um, is supposed to have this uh, stereoscopic vision because this is what helps us to uh, drive and perceive things, um, even forms and shapes. However, I noticed over the last couple of years, especially I experienced this one experience where uh, people were, um, well, they were doing witchcraft, right? And they was trying to perform it on me. And I noticed that my thinking went to a shift. Uh, thankful to God uh, for this shift because God can use everything and he does use everything even even the bad that satan does um but this is a situation that actually just happened and i had to take both uh what i saw in the spirit and what i saw in the natural uh to see what god was saying to me uh well i had this guy to come to my door who didn't told me this lie and then threatened me however uh maybe a month before this situation happened i heard god say to me in a dream and i saw the scripture walk and don't grow weary when i woke up of course, I just prayed and I got to speaking to God saying, OK, God, what are you what are you saying to me? Because I have slowed my whole life down, my uh, activities and everything. So I still couldn't understand really what he was saying at the moment. I thought I did because I'm like, OK, maybe it's just meaning rest more because he also had me to honor the Sabbath over these last couple of years. And I learned how important this rest is. Um for the body of Christ, because this rest truly brings so much uh, peace, so much joy. It has us also to hear and think clearly and to see what God is saying to us. Uh, so anyway, with the situation happening, of course, me being natural, I was truly, truly, truly like taken back. Like, what the crap is this? But I also had to think about 
three days even prior before the guy came to my door, I had just texted um, this one woman who comes to my house for we do Bible study and um, and just talk about God. And I had texted her and said, hey, the next time you come, I said, can we pray for individuals who are seeking God um, and don't have a way uh, to connect with him or may not want to connect uh, to the church because of so many different reasons that they join us? Three days later, here come the guy at my door, you know, with the craziness. So I'm just like, hmm, okay, God, I see what happened. I see what went on in the natural, but in the spirit, okay, what's going on? I just called this, you know, so I'm like, is this his way of, you know, letting me know that this person, you know, is an individual who need this, which I I do know that even before the, the guy came to my door with the madness, this individual, when I first met them, my spirit sensed that, yeah, this person needs some help. Okay. Let's go take it a little bit deeper. Um, I had to sit and think on that situation. I I wanted it's so many different things that I wanted to actually like do in the natural, but I kept saying, okay, this I need to make sure that I am executing something in the spirit first so that I don't mess up what God is trying to do that I may not know about. Because also, let me go back again. I had a dream where he showed me this one person, just one person. I don't know whether it was a man or a woman, but actually the, city, the silhouette of the person did look like a guy. And he showed me where he was going after this one person. Of course, when I got up, I began to pray and thank God for revealing to me his word and whoever this person is, um, that he is going after this one. So, I, of course, I'm in prayer for him to to do as his word says, go after this one person, because this is the God that we serve. Well, I also got to thinking, um, this morning about what God is also saying to me in this situation. Now, just like it talks about in a uh, stereoscopic vision, how you have, how it takes your, your left eye and it takes a, a, a vision, your right eye takes a vision and it brings it together to form something. Well, this is the same that we have to do or that I have learned to do, or let me say God has trained me to do is to see in 3D. So I saw the, I saw the evil demonic spirit, right? In the guy. I also saw what God showed me, right? And I also know what I also know that I have a natural and how do I bring that together into my life, into my atmosphere. I still also had to go back and then begin to think about years ago how God showed me how I was delivering people up from the pit of hell. When he showed me that all I could do was just cry because I'm just like, how do I do that? Where do I, get, where do I get that ability from? Because I know in my own ability, in my natural man, I cannot do that. I do not have the power to, but God can equip me, which he has. And he equips all of us for the calling that he has for us. So I had to go back and think about all that he shared with me. Um, all that he have told me, um, and put that together, the same as the vision, You how you take the left eye, take a portion of, of the vision, the right eye, take a portion of the vision, and it brings something together. So anyway, what I, I, I knew that I had to share was that what God has shown me through this is that I know that I'm an intercessor. That I do know. So I know that I had to continue to pray for this person and then specifically this man, right? But then also too, he was also showing me something about me that I still need to do before he can fully take me into um, my calling. And that thing is to still rest 
because I had to think about it because I'm also I'm in school uh, working on my uh, theology degree and my graduation date is for next year, 2024. I also homeschool my son. So it's a lot on my plate. There's other things that I also do. However, I realized that what he was saying to me was, just like he said, walk and don't grow weary. I has to still I have to still continue to rest, to slow to slow down. But then I had one of my good friends, Melissa, to come to me and she spoke something that it took me a whole day to just ponder on. She said, now, Ted, you got to remember that it's not our timing. It's on God's timing when things happen. So as I sat down at night to, which was actually yesterday, to go and study, I started to say to myself, I hear what Melissa has said to me. And then I'm relating it to everything that has transpired that God has shown me uh, in the spirit and what I see in the natural. I said, okay, God, what you're saying is that I still need to rest. I need to pull back and I may be going too fast for whatever he has for me. So when I realized that, I said, okay, one of these classes, I must let go and just continue on this one. Because I also began to think about Judge Mathis' daughter. She gave her testimony at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden in, in, in Maryland. <laughs> love that church. Love the pastor. Um, and her testimony was when she was in college, she was getting all types of bad grades. Um, you know, she just didn't even know if she was going to finish. You know, things just kept being... She took her... Uh, I think she is... Is she an attorney? I think she may is, but she's helping um, youth... Uh, children um, or even youth that has been incarcerated to um, reform their lives. And she said she prayed to God that, you know, um, this is what she want. This is what she, you know, desired to do for the kingdom of God. So she not realizing why she had to take the bar exam at least twice. Right. Why she, you know, was just so behind in class things just, you know, the, the way things was progressing, it was just like slow. So she said after she got, she took the exam, I think for the third time, she said, then this one building or, or some type of organization opened up in Maryland where she, where she moved to exactly. And, and actually that's where I'm from. So, um, she, um, she realized that if she would have gotten her degree any earlier, that she would not have had that position because soon as she got her degree, then this, this, this building or whatever was, you know, completed or whatever. And then she, she went right into her job. So I begin to, to think about all of this and see how God is pulling something together, but also too, um, I did before God said to me, walk and don't grow weary. I was kind of getting a little behead myself when I, when I get anxious i start to get overly anxious then i have an anxiety attack and i'm just like oh okay god what's going on um and and the thing is because then i i'm now going ahead of god when god is telling me to slow down that like he said walk and don't grow weary i have something for you to do right here but that bigger thing that i have for you to do is not yet here so therefore I still just, just rest. Let me do this. Let and, and where you are, you know, continue to do what I have called you to do, to do in today so that when the door opens up for the tomorrow, I can understand why I went through all of, you know, what I went through. I can understand too, why my mind then went into the shift that it did, because also it's a training for something, um, training for something big, a calling that, uh, uh, God has for me, whatever that is right now, I truly don't know, but I see all of the training and the working that he's taking me through. There was a one point in my life that I did not see in 3d. I just, you know, could see what God was saying, but I can see the good. I can see the bad. I can see how to relate that into my natural life. Um, and it's a work in progress. Each time, you know, he gives me things. I have to sit down, figure this thing out. Think about what he said to me, um, uh, 
before. Maybe it could have been a year ago. Maybe it could have been months ago. However, I still have to take what he said to me in the past, what he just said to me, what's happening in the natural, and I have to bring that thing together to see what he's saying to me. And when it talks about um, the poor stereo um, um, scopsis could indicate a serious eye condition known as amblopia, which is lazy eye. I begin to see that as two in the spirit when we don't take our time to perceive what God is saying to us, taking every dimension, every word that he has said to us. I look at that as the lazy eye and what I and, and to relate that to the spiritual like is is spiritually lazy because we have a job that we have to do. We have to now perceive what is God saying to us? What is he speaking to us? What are these uh, situations for or or? Uh, you can also even say, um, do I want to say metaphor? Uh, no, because this really isn't a metaphor um, when I think about it. But he uses all every situation that we have to speak to us, right? And if we are not taking the time to try to figure things out, we become anxious and we get um spiritually lazy because we're not taking that time to decipher what he has said to us and, and that's what a, the 3d vision of depth perception how you have to go in depth to see what is he saying to us why is he saying why is he saying this and we may not, and guess what we don't always know all of what he's saying to us but the basic part of whatever he's saying to us if we get it Ooh, that's good. And then the bigger part of it can come later, you know, and, and, and that's still the, the important part that I know that he's saying to me is to walk and don't grow weary. I am an individual that I like to go fast. Boom, 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 boom. I'm Hey, it's, let's get it done. But in this season, what he's saying is to walk, don't grow weary, to rest. And that's exactly what I have been doing resting but he's still telling me to pull back and in my mind i'm still like how much more do i need to rest or pull back a lot more um oh i wanted to talk about too the the where it says the deficiencies in the depth perception can result in a lack of 3d vision or headaches and eye strain just going back to to that again um mm, Maybe not. No, let's go to the part where in the 3D vision, um, where it talks about relies on both eyes working together to accurately focus on the same point in space. When God is speaking to us, rather it is with through his word or through circumstances or things he has specifically said to us. We should be coming to the same point in space where God is. And I believe that we would know that we come to the same point in space where God is with what he's saying to us for our lives is when we begin to feel peace, when we can uh, see that, see the situation clearly, understand it and execute it. And that execution may be just what he's saying to me, rest. Um, how I had to realize that I had to pull back from one of the classes for this semester and just focus on this one class um, because what he's saying to me is not yet. Take your time. Be still. And the, and, and the assignment that he has for me specifically that I see is praying specifically for this one person that he showed me that he went after. Then the person came to my door, which, okay, I'm putting this together. This is that person that you're going after. I've been new. My spirit knew when I first met these people. Um, that there was something wrong. My spirit was not agreeing with them. So now God is showing me my assignment that I have for right now. But I, I, I wanted to share this because of, to me, it was so good. So good how I had to think about how I had to pull all of these pieces together to form one thing of what God was saying to me. Actually, it's, it's like two things. I need you to pray for this person right now. Right. Because this is the one individual that I'm going after. But I also need you to rest because I got you. I, I just just rest. Do what I'm do what I'm showing you right now. And what I have for you is going to come. 
And see, and that's kind of hard because for me, because I'm like, okay, God, I've been, you know, doing this. I've been doing that. I'm seeking you. Like, I, I want it like right now. Can it come on? Like, yeah, I've been praying for people for years. I've been having dreams. You've been showing me the things since I was, you know, a little child in elementary school. So it's just like, okay, God, how much, how much longer? You know, but he's still telling me to rest. I'm smiling because I got it, you all. I got it. To somebody who is already, you know, this calm, you know, restful individual, it may sound easy. But for me, it's not easy. It's, it's not easy. Even though he have told me even to rest even more. To somebody seeing this, I know they're going to be like, that is so simple. It is not not for me not for individuals who always have to be doing something you have to you know um be working here you got to be you know trying to improve this you got to be helping somebody here whatever the case may be you know just putting adding so much more onto your life when god is saying nope 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 i don't need you over there i don't need you over here i don't need you with those individuals i need you separated and listening to what i have called you to do and what i'm calling you to so hey i hope this helps somebody i i truly truly do because it took me some years to get here to be able to take all of those different dynamics and to pull them together and to say this is what god is saying and i think maybe it's a it's a season well not maybe it is a season for everything as it says in the book of ecclesiastic there's a time and a season for everything so this is the season that i am that i am in now and um it can be confusing uh it can be difficult And it can also be uh, peaceful because once you get it, it's like, hey, I got it, God. I got it. <laughs> so that's all, you guys. Um, yeah, until next time. Um, so you all enjoy. God bless you. And um, I'll see you next time.